Hey everybody, Joel Hoekstra from White Snake and Trans Siberian Orchestra. I want to thank Jason Sidwell and Guitar Techniques for this opportunity, and I'm going to do my best to explain to you what I just played there in Excalibur. Basically, it's a technique of arpeggiating um, five chords on neighboring strings. So I'm taking G5, the chord provided in the track is a G minor. Um, so what I'm doing there is. You can see the G5 up here on the 12th fret, and the G5 down there. So now what I'm going to do is change the melody note but to give it some rhythmic variety. Do do two taps so that opening figure now moves to full octaves here. It's a G octave and a D octave. Then I'm going to walk down the scale. And then rather than come straight down the scale on the G, I thought kind of starting low and going up sounded better to me. So that now the second time it happens, I do come down the scale. Now, and the last note held gave a little space. Um, so I hope that helps for the opening figure over G minor. Now when it goes to D minor, all I'm doing is just moving it up a string basically and doing this for D minor, so. Okay, then the G minor figure happens again. Um, and then half of the D minor figure the second time because halfway through the chord changes to an A7. So there I thought I would go to A over C sharp here in the left hand, four and seven, right? And an A5 chord here in the melody note. Rather than reach up to that G, I came back to E. So. Now the scale walked on. So, um, I hope that helps for the A section. Now the B section here, we got a G minor six uh, over D for the change. So what I did is I took this portion of a G minor six and here you can clearly see a, a G five chord essentially inverted, a fourth, right? Um, so rhythmically trying to keep things interested, interesting for you guys. So I switched to that rather than even. Okay, so. And I have a tendency to do a little vibrato on those. Um, and changing the melody note again. So that G minor 6 over D. Okay, now the chord change right here goes to a D. Um, so I, what I did is I found a D right here with an A and an F sharp. And I basically started on the fourth up here, so the twelfth fret, right, by going... And I decided to even out the rhythm here again to kind of keep things a little more interesting to listen to. Um, so rather than that digga da boom digga da boom right, going back to, um, I guess what would be straight sixteenths, digga 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 digga, yeah. So just the melody note changing. Now here, hopping to an octave there. Okay. And uh, now it really changes because what happens is I'm going to go to three strings. Um, so rather than these two string figures that I've been doing, um, uh, the change itself is, uh, it's really a C minor changing to a C minor over B flat. Um, I kind of just treated it like a C minor though. So you can see it's really two stacked power chords. It's a C power chord and an E flat power chord with my right hand. And rhythmically... change goes to A minor 7 flat 5, it's really only a one note change to outline that chord to arpeggiate it, so it's just this, instead of being a B flat here with this third finger, it changes to an A. Uh, so we get, and again, giving it some space, I opted just for, 
все. Now, um, the change was it kind of went to a D sus to a D. So I kind of went with a dot, the concept of a diminished seven with this three string thing, uh, but keeping the sus up top. So, uh, and then just resolving it to a D seven. harder to slow these things down than to play them at tempo. Okay, so uh, hopefully that gets you guys through the B section there. Um, uh, again. to the solo. So the solo here, I'm really utilizing a technique I do a lot of where I play with my right hand an octave away from my left hand. Um, it starts over an E flat minor. So I really just went with E flat minor pentatonic, did a little like glisten, right? And then what's happening here is I'm, I'm getting the sixth and ninth fret with my left hand and an octave higher on, uh, I guess it would be 18 and 21 with my right hand. And I'm thinking about sixes. I tend to lead with my index finger when I tap, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And I'm, all I'm doing is thinking about going down E flat minor pentatonic, going uh. And what's happening there is. Once again, you know, just like vibrato, bending when you tap usually comes from the left hand. All I do is really hold that 16th fret there, so um, that run, the opening run. Once again, slower for you guys. Now to keep things interesting, it goes to B flat minor, rather than rise up with the same rhythm, what I did there is I switched to something I call zigzag sixes. So we were doing sixes on the way down there with E flat. Um, what, I, what I changed it to here is... So um, starting here on 16, 18, 6, 16. I do my first three of those on this B flat minor pentatonic like that, going. Okay, so. Now I kind of switch back to my standard six. And right there, that bend is happening on 21. And honestly, to get it there, that one's almost both hands. I'm kind of pulling up a bit with my right hand, and my left hand's helping by going down to get it to pitch. So, um, once again, the E flat. Okay. Now what's happening is, uh, rhythmically, because I kind of went for, I guess, what would be like a two dotted eighth notes and maybe a quarter, I guess. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Not really, a, I don't think it's a quarter or a triplet, but. <laughs> is I end up getting like fives, uh, groups of five. So I'm not really coming up back to that note. I kind of get, right? So I slide in, this is, uh, I'm using the E flat blues scale. We're back over the E flat minor chord, so. See that? So I'm getting 16 and 17 here with my right hand. Now what happens is I do switch back to proper sixes. I go... So... Now, 
conveniently, I'm right there for really the same thing with the B flat minor or the B flat minor chord to use the blues scale. So I do the fives again. I switch to sixes and get a bend up to B flat there. So. Okay, on to the second part of the solo. This had a bunch of changes, this D minor to A over D, back to D minor to A7, uh, D7, and then an E. And I kind of thought, boy, D would be kind of a cool thing, a, the D string. So kind of thought of almost a Van Halen-y thing, but going with the multi-finger thing still, of just arpeggiating using the open string. So I'm taking D minor here. <laughs> change that to the notes of an A7 over D so so fret wise I'm going 12 and 15 and 7 and 3 for the D minor and going to A7 it's 11 and 14 and 7 and 5 so the second time here with that change the D minor starts the same but I invert to so this moves up to 15 and 19, and this is 12 and 7. And the first two A7s are going to move to 14 and 17, and 7 and 11. And for that to 11 and 14 and 5 and 7, okay? Now D7 we hit as a change. It's going to be 10 and 12 and 7 and 4. Uh, now it, uh, I guess I went Now here I moved up this D7 to 7 and 10 and I did a little sus thing here going So Now when it gets to the E change i thought rather than playing an e major chord what i would do is superimpose the diminished seven on it and kind of use a essentially a harmonic minor right so i'm taking a diminished seven pattern which works out beautifully on on tapping you know you've got this these four notes right these and now ri rising up what i'm doing is the zigzag six pattern of Hopefully makes sense to you guys. So a little sloppy there, sorry. Now coming down that, um, once again, because it's that kind of uh, dotted quarter note pattern or or eighth note triplet, I'm I'm not quite sure to be honest with you, but um, coming down the accents being da 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 da, right? So. Uh, I'm playing those groups of five again that I covered earlier in the first part of the solo where it's like and a little bend up resolving the E. So coming down there, uh, a little sloppy. Dip the bend a little or something there. So now we're back into an A section that's essentially modulated. This is the same exact figure that I played over G minor to D minor, but it happens A minor to E minor. So you could just move it up two frets. There's nothing to it. Now the B section this time around, uh, very exact same thing for the G minor six. Uh, the okay, getting into that uh, rhythmic figure. And the change, however, went to an A seven here instead of a D the first time. So what I did is I did. So, 
back to the G minor six figure. <laughs> And then this time for D, I ended up playing a different rhythm for whatever reason, just uh... So. S um, same figure when we go to the C minor. And then the A minor 7 flat 5, same thing. Again, that held note provides an end of a phrase. Same thing moving up to the D7 sus. Uh, I'm thinking of that diminished seven thing, but with the, with the sus four up top. So. so at first there, your frets are, let me see, 13, 14, and 16 with the left, uh, 16, 17, and 20. Uh, and this is just a straight up power chord, 12, 14, 15, and then this is, makes it into a D7 here with this 16, 17, and 19. Sorry. Okay. Messy as it may be. Now for the final figure. For the finish, it resolves to a G major chord, and I just decided I would outline it with an arpeggio, and I'm thinking those groups of six once again. So fret-wise, you got 15 to 20, back to the 15, down to 12, 8 and 12, right? Now what happens is I just invert the G major chord to here on the high E, so I'm going 15, 19, 15, 10, 7, 10. The last time I do it, I chose to slide up to this because it makes it easier to play the final inversion up here, which is 19 to 22, 15 and 10. And I thought it sounded better resolving it on G, so. finish so okay as far as the resolution of the song goes um, one thing about deadening a lot of people ask me how I'm not using a uh, string mute or anything like that you can notice that when I do like that G major that um, what's really happening for me is not really any muting with the right hand per se. I do try and keep this index slightly like flattened out to kill the neighboring string above it, but a whole lot of it is me fretting when I fret with my index finger, not fretting on the tip, but kind of fretting it with the knuckle to reach out and kill a couple strings. And then you'll notice that whenever possible, I keep these fingers straight to kind of help with that muting. So. Really, the muting's happening here with the middle finger on the right hand. And okay, hope that explains it all for you guys.